uh, I think in I think in instances like this, you uh, you prepare well out of fear. Right? Like you, know, you go back to the future. We haven't been very good on the road in the last couple of years. I guess last year, but even before I got there, they weren't very good on the road. So we're trying to build our resolve as a team, and uh, we really worked on it. But like I I like Georgetown's team. Right, so when I'm watching on film and I see those two guards and I see what Thomas Sorber did to start, you know, the size, the physicality, PV, you know, you prepare out of fear. And I'm always realistic with our guys. Um, and I think they were really locked in defensively. Like, I think we're a really good offensive team. They were really locked in defensively. And I think that's where you, know, you see us kind of push ahead. From um, in the first half, both Alaco and Davis made incredible impacts offensively. Was that just in the flow of the offense for what Georgetown was trying to take away? And those guys had opportunities and they took advantage of those opportunities? Or was that something that you knew you were going to do coming into the half? No, we, we just kind of played pretty free-flowing offensively. Um, but, like, there's so much attention paid to Marcus. There's so much attention paid to Braden that sometimes you forget about those two guys and they're really good basketball players, right? Like, Tay Davis is now getting more and more comfortable. And uh, he had 27 the last game. Like, he's really comfortable in how he's playing in himself, what he's doing. And then, you know, Alaco's just a gamer. When the lights come on the brightest, he's at his best. And uh, he was an absolutely great pickup for us this summer. And you spoke a little bit about your defense. They had very few paint touches at all, whether it was by the pass or by the dribble. Was that something that was at the top of your scout that they don't get there? Because they did not get there in the back. Yeah, I think for us, um, you know, we went into the game talking about transition, their transition, and talking about their offensive rebounding because that's where they've really been punishing people. Um, but our defense is always built around protecting the paint. And, um, you know, sometimes that hurts us, sometimes it doesn't. In these guys, it was like, you know, make them take tough contested shots. And I thought we did that. And they made some, right? They're going to make some of those. But over and over and over again, it's, it's hard to, I think it's hard to beat us that way. Mike, and when you kind of look at where, when you guys played last year, they were a little older. And you had a lot of young guys, two, two young guards. It feels like that's flipped a little bit where you've got guys that have been in your system for four or five guys or so. Did, did that feel like a little bit of that experience kind of bubbling up a little bit today? Yeah, it is. And it's earlier. It's right. Like we played them in December last year, right around finals time, um, where our guys were young, but they were still young at that point in time, right? This is third game of the year uh, for both of us. So, you know, they're still trying to gel what they do. Uh, but they count on some young guys, right? Mac and Mac is still young, right? Um, Thomas is, is still young. Fielder, like all those guys, they're counting on. Where being outside of the system now, trying to learn the system at the same time, playing you know major college basketball. So um, that's where I think the advantage of our guys getting thrown into the fire last year. Now they're comfortable. They're comfortable in any situation, and uh, I think yeah, you, you did see that kind of flip between the two things. And doubling back to the defense a little bit, you know, you take out the second chance points for them, you take out the points off turnovers. For it being mid-November, having that kind of settled defense, how encouraging is that for you as you move forward? Yeah, it's really good for us because we, we've, you know, last year all of our time was spent on becoming a good defensive team because I thought that was the only way we could hang into games, the only way we could stick around. We had to, like, make it a game in the mud and try and, like, score in the 60s and play in the 60s. Um, you know, as we've gotten better offensively, our defense hasn't shifted at all, right? So, like, if we want to play in the 80s, we want to hold you in the 60s. And um, that's the kind of effort that it takes. And, you know, we're just shuffling bodies, playing different people, and different guys come in and play at the same effort level. Um, that's what I love the most is there's no drop-off when we sub defensively. Um, the absence of Thomas was obvious. They struggled. When you saw that, you know, he was banged up. I don't know if you saw it in, in, in warm-ups or whatever, but when you realized he was banged up, did you, do you think those guys were on their heels as a result? 
I mean, it seemed like they, they weren't very aggressive at all offensively, weren't hitting the boards, and, and were kind of hesitant. Whereas you jumped out of that big lead, you guys went right at Yeah, that, that's, you know, I didn't I didn't know. I wasn't out here, so I didn't find out until about 10 minutes before that he wasn't starting. And, um, you know, it, it shifts the game plan. It shifts how we started, what we prepared, how we were going to put different people where. Um, but I, I knew, like, you still got to worry about Epps and Mac, right? Like that, like those two guys are still a focal point. So it didn't change too much. It was just like, hey, we we may not double the post as much, right? Because the ball's not going in. They're not throwing it inside as much, right? When when Thomas isn't in there, so uh, it changed our focus. And now it becomes for our bigs more pick and roll dominant than post up dominant. Right. Go ahead. Coach, you got some nice minutes off the bench today from Konstantinovsky and Chevy Har. How do you feel about your team's depth after a game like this, especially with a guy like Chevy Har spacing the floor? Yeah, uh, those two guys, like, you know, we played two mid-major teams and guys that have been picking and popping, and it's really bothered those two guys, right, and how much they played. Like, Burke didn't play at all against Buffalo last – like, he didn't play at all on Monday, right? Think about that. Now he comes in and gives you nine big points. I thought when those two guys got in, they really settled us, right, because we, we use our bigs as ball handlers, as passers, everything else, and – to have two fifth-year seniors come in, like they didn't really, they weren't shook by the pressure. And that's when we started really taking the lead out a little bit in the first half when those two guys subbed in. They played with great effort. They handled the ball. They didn't turn it over. And then Burke shooting is something that, you know, you're worried, so worried about Marcus getting into the paint. Now when you stop the ball, Burke's back there popping, picking and popping three. So he gives us a weapon that we haven't had. All right, Theodore. John Titel from Hoops HD. Coach, uh, I read that you've been practicing with a 24-second shot clock. I was curious how you think that has translated into your success during games this year. Yeah, um, we want to do it. Like, we're, we're trying to play with more pace, and that's not always that's not always in resulting in, like, fast break points. Right? Sometimes we get scored on. We want to get out of the net quick. We want to try and kick it ahead to guys running the wing, which happened a couple of times. But it really affects us in the half court. Now, they did, they they switched some screens, so it slowed us down a little bit. Um, but we want our half court cutting to be great, like the, the pace of our cuts. And I think that's when we're really good. Because when we're cutting fast like that, now we can move it from side to side. Now you're, you're worried about one side, the other side. Then we're attacking the paint after that. So I think the 24 seconds has helped our half court cutting pace really improve. Last two right here. Hey, Coach, um, you talked about playing on the road a little bit. What does the preparation look like when you're going from an arena that only seats 9,000 to an arena that is fit for NBA teams? Such as yeah. Um, I don't know. There's probably two things that, that, you know, I've been thinking about this game for a while, right, especially when early in the year. Um, so, one, like, we got to play our conference tournament here. Right? We played two games here last year in the conference tournament. So, we have seven guys that are back that all played in those conference tournament games. So they're like getting in here and playing. Now they're used to it a little bit. Not used to it, but like they've been here before. And then the other thing is um, I scheduled a road game against a mid-major team as an exhibition. Like we went on the road in the exhibition and played a, mid, a good mid-major team uh, just so we could go through preparation, right, how we travel what we do the night before, what's our shoot around look like, all of that stuff strictly for this game, right? I wanted to come here and be ready. And uh, we have an old team, older team. We're still pretty young. Our guards are young. Tay and Kev are only juniors. Like, uh, but we have a mature team, and I thought they handled coming on the road the way that you're supposed to. After your last question. Uh, Coach, how do you think a win like this, just what kind of message do you think it sends to not only the rest of the ACC, but also just the nation as a whole? I, I, you know, I talk to our guys about, like, road wins are gold, man. Everybody's trying to get wins on the road, and it doesn't matter who you beat, right? So, like, right now, we've talked about the ACC and how we help each other. Like, we got to be good in the non-conference. All of us, top to bottom, we have to be good in the non-conference. So, like, I can only play the games on my schedule. So that means I need to do my part. We need to do our part as a group. So we need to come on the road and get a win. Just so we help our league and we help ourselves. Um, so, you know, I don't know if it was any kind of statement, but, like, we're just doing our part.
we're doing our part so we can get more teams in the NCAA tournament. Hopefully, Fighting Irish is one of those teams. Great, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.